Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that connects you with the best movies to stream, and today we're talking about 20 absolutely brilliant movies currently available on Netflix. That's right, today we're going to be talking about 20 superb movies currently included with Netflix. These are going to be either smart movies or movies that are so well directed that they're damn near perfect. Later in the video, I'll tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant, and how I've been using them to literally change the way I think. But we're going to start this list off all the way at the back with a George Clooney movie that I consider to be highly underrated, Michael Clayton. I don't know what Walter promised you, but I can a tell you A miracle that. worker. That's Walter on the phone 20 minutes ago. Direct quote, okay? Hang tight. I'm sending you a miracle worker. Oh, he misspoke. About what? About the fact that you're the firmest fixer or that you're any good at it? Now, on the surface, this seems kind of like an ordinary, talky kind of a movie. In fact, the synopsis leaves a lot to be desired. In this movie, George Clooney plays a fixer for a major law firm. After one of its top lawyers, played by Tom Wilkinson, has a nervous breakdown, loses his mind, and is about to divulge a lot of sensitive information about a chemical company. I know, I made that sound as interesting as I could, and it still sounds really dry. However, Michael Clayton is expertly directed by Tony Gilroy, who has only done a few movies. This is far and away his best. And the real star of this movie is the performances and not just Clooney's. In fact, Tom Wilkinson gives the performance of his career as this high-powered lawyer who's having a breakdown. On the flip side, you get an incredible role from Tilda Swinton, who's doing almost the complete opposite, and she's killing it as well. So not only are the performances great, but they threaded the needle so well on this movie that even though Though the synopsis is dry, the story will keep you on the edge of your seat. My next pick is another movie with some big name actors that is also better than its synopsis and much better than its title, Flight. The plane fell apart at 30,000 feet. We're gonna roll it. What, okay. what do you mean roll it? Ready? Here we go. In this movie, Denzel Washington plays an airline pilot who saves an entire plane full of people from an otherwise deadly plane crash. That is the major event at the beginning of the movie that sets everything else in motion. And based on the trailers, you're led to believe that's what the movie's about. It's kind of like Sully with Tom Hanks, except this is a work of fiction. However, this movie goes into a very different direction, and I'm not going to speak as to what that is, because it kind of sneaks up on you the same way it sneaks up on the main character played by Denzel Washington, who does an incredible job. And what's so amazing about this movie is his performance only gets stronger throughout the movie as the tone changes. This was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who is known for directing some of the absolute most famous movies in history, Back to the Future, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump, and Flight is not his best movie, but it's still expertly directed by him, and ultimately does a really kind of beautiful magic trick towards the end of the story. And I'll say this is probably a movie that's more important for some people to see rather than others. That said, if you like anything about what I've said, definitely check out Flight. I know it's my number 19 pick, but this is a list of bangers. Speaking of bangers, my next pick just recently got added back to Netflix. However, it's been available off and on for the last few years. Nightcrawler, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. What happened in there? You should have walked in and looked, Rick. I heard gunshots. All the more reason you might have helped me. You might have learned a new skill that made you more useful and put us on a track toward growth. This, to me, was almost like a modern day taxi driver. It was similar in a lot of ways in its themes, but ultimately different enough. If you've never seen it, Gyllenhaal plays a independent journalist who roams the streets of LA at night looking for things to film to sell to the local news companies. And as it goes with the news, the bloodier, the better, and his character begins to take some matters into his own hands. Renee Russo is fantastic in this. When I first saw her in this movie, it had been years since I'd seen her in anything, and she had not lost a step. And then Riz Ahmed was in this before he was in a lot of bigger movies, and he's really a fantastic addition as well. Now, I will say, as weird as Gyllenhaal's performance is, this movie never really went off the rails. It comes close, it goes into that territory at times, 
sometimes, and it's quite exciting and interesting when it does that. However, it stays fairly grounded throughout, which I think ultimately worked for this movie. It deals with some dark themes and is not the most fun movie on this list to watch. However, Jake Gyllenhaal's performance really adds a lot of electricity to this movie that I don't think would have been there otherwise, and it does make it a lot more entertaining. If you like these types of creepy thrillers, they don't get a whole lot better than Nightcrawler. My number 17 pick is going to change things up in tone quite a bit with Eddie Murphy and Wesley Snipes in Dolomite Is My Name. Dolomite is my name and f***ing up motherfuckers is my game. Now this to me was one of the most surprising Netflix original movies I had ever seen, mainly because I did not expect too much from it. Most of the Netflix original comedies leave a lot to be desired, and it had been a long, long, long time since Eddie Murphy had been in any movies, much less anything very good. However, not only did Eddie Murphy absolutely kill it, Wesley Snipes' character, I think, really stole the show, at least in every scene that he was in. I've always been a big Wesley Snipes fan, and the last couple of roles he's done on Netflix, including the Kevin Hart true story, have been some of my favorites of his. Dolomite Is My Name is an incredibly funny movie about a true story about people making a movie, and it's very fun to watch because everyone involved with this story is having a good time, and even though it's kind of a violent, sex-filled movie that they're making, it's all done with the best intentions, and this movie really does have a lot of heart to it, more so than most comedies nowadays, and certainly more than most Netflix original comedies. Another Netflix original that surprised me, but not as much because it came from one of my absolute favorite directors, David Fincher, is Mank. Mank? It's Orson Welles. Of course it is. I think it's time we talk. And not only did David Fincher just really direct the hell out of this thing, I mean, this thing is directed so much more expertly than almost any other Netflix original movie you could point to, but Gary Oldman ultimately really sells this thing with his performance. In this movie, Gary Oldman plays Herman Mankiewicz, who was the screenwriter for Citizen Kane, which is largely considered one of the greatest movies ever made, and was certainly considered that back when it was released. This is another one with a relatively dry synopsis, but not only are the direction and the performances top notch in this movie, but the story does delve into some interesting themes that coincide with Citizen Kane, but are also completely separate. There's kind of a power struggle that occurs in this thing, and it's done with this very light touch that I found to be really exceptional, especially for something that is included with Netflix. And Mank is definitely a movie worth multiple looks, especially for movie love or anyone who is in love with the movie Citizen Kane. So believe it or not, I used to run Flick Connection, this channel and my Instagram account, for the first couple of years with nothing but this and this. But take it from me, your smartphone can be a source of poison in your life or a source of power depending on how you use it, which is where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Now, as brilliant as I may seem here on YouTube, I was actually a pretty terrible student, particularly in math, and I've always felt inept in that area. But the best way to learn is interactively, and Brilliant is an amazing tool for learning STEM interactively. And Brilliant features these clever little courses that allow you to learn at your own pace. And you can get started with Brilliant for free. There's a link in the video description below, or you can just go to brilliant.org slash flick connection. And the first 200 of you that do that are gonna save 20% if you buy a premium annual subscription. But the lessons are short, sweet, and oddly satisfying. After a few minutes with Brilliant, I feel smarter and legitimately energized, whereas scrolling through Instagram usually leaves me feeling dumber and exhausted. And it's worth noting, Brilliant is geared for ages 10 to 110. And I'm already using Brilliant to brush up on my math skills. You know, that way my children don't lose all faith in their father the first time they ask for help with their algebra homework. Brilliant also features courses in scientific thinking, computer science, logic, and more. Again, to get started for free, use the link in the description below or just go to brilliant.org slash flick connection. And if you wanna sign up for the premium account, the first 200 of you will save 20% when you sign up. It is a smart move, but speaking of smart moves, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. 
My next pig makes the list not because it's so intelligent and thinky, it's actually kind of a dumb action movie, but it is brilliantly directed in a way never really done before. I'm talking about Hardcore Henry. Okay, well the good news is that you're gonna live a while. The bad news is there's an army standing between you and your wife. So let's go get her. This is one of my personal favorites on the platform right now. Not only is it a wild, fun action movie, but it is shot from a first person perspective with a special camera mounted on a stuntman's head, and it makes for an absolutely wild viewing experience. And not only that, I mean honestly that gimmick would have been enough to hook me on a lousy story, but Hardcore Henry is a pretty cool flick without this gimmick. I mean it's got wild sci-fi elements that don't make a ton of sense, but man are they entertaining to watch, and in fact, it feels very much like a video game experience, and not just because of the first person perspective. The way that you roll through this story and hammer through it as Henry is a really interesting experience, honestly. Even if you're not generally into brash action movies, Hardcore Henry is such a unique and interesting viewing experience. For film nuts, it may be well worth checking out. My number 14 pick is the only documentary to make this list, Icarus. Because it is the story that unveiled Russia's massive cheating scheme during the Olympics. I was thinking that it would start, I ask you questions and you answer yes or no. Were you the mastermind that cheated the Olympics? Yes. And ultimately, Icarus is a very well executed documentary. It's precise, gives you a lot of information in a very tight time frame. However, what I found so brilliant about Icarus is it starts off trying to do something very different. Creator and star of the documentary, Brian Fogel, was trying to uncover the truth about doping in sports. His plan was to do this big bike race without any doping one year, then go back, go through a doping routine that you can conceal and then see how much better he improved his bike race. Interesting idea, but what happens is he gets in touch with a Russian scientist who was going to help him hide his doping, and he uncovered this massive conspiracy to cheat at the Olympics. And if that weren't interesting enough, Russia starts hunting this guy down, and it turns into an incredibly intense documentary as well, and also a pretty important one, I think. My next pick is a South Korean crime thriller from 2015 that I absolutely loved titled Veteran. I am a big fan of crime movies from South Korea. This one is one of my personal favorites and it was only just recently added to Netflix. On the surface, Veteran is kind of a basic cop movie. You're dealing with a detective, hunting down a bad guy, nothing too unique there. However, the two leads, the cop and the villain, are both really interesting characters. The cop is a little bit funny, he's got this really interesting personality and sense of humor. He's just an interesting character to watch, and he's a lot of fun to watch. I could say the same thing for the villain. Not only is the villain in this movie unusually vicious, but the way he's written makes every scene he's in, I hate to say entertaining, but man, did he really kill it in this movie. Unlike a lot of the movies from South Korea on Netflix, this one does not have a dubbed version, so you're gonna be relegated to subtitles here, but the movie is that good. Even if you don't read subtitles often, this one's gonna be well worth checking out. Now, another sort of formulaic cop movie that's actually incredibly funny, smartly written, and really well acted is The Nice Guys. Right, look, when you're talking to your doctor, just tell him you have a spiral fracture out the left radius. No! No! Deep breath. No! Released in 2016, this was one of my favorite movies that year. It's written and directed by Shane Black, who wrote the bulk of the Lethal Weapon series, and you can see a lot of similar humor in this. However, this doesn't really feel like a Lethal Weapon movie. It takes place in the 1970s and has a beautiful aesthetic to it. Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe co-star in this, and they make a pretty great buddy duo, but as much as I like Russell Crowe in this movie, Ryan Gosling really does steal the show. This is some of his best comedy 
comedy work. And honestly, the movie is just so snappy. Every single scene has really great jokes in it. And the story, the mystery that you uncover as you go through this story is excellent. It's kind of classic neo-noir stuff, but it's just really funny and really well put together. This is one that I have enjoyed watching over and over again. If you've never seen it, it is gonna be one of the best things on Netflix for you right now, regardless of what types of movies you generally watch. And if you have seen it, there's a chance you forgot how rewatchable this movie actually is. Well, I definitely have some dark movies still to go on this list. My next pick is the only true horror movie on this list, and it makes this list because it's one of the only horror movies from the last 10 years to really break the mold and do something new. I'm talking about It Follows. Wherever you are, it's somewhere walking straight for you. All you can do is pass it along to someone else. So the crux of It Follows is that there's this demon or being, creature, whatever you want to say, that actually gets transmitted to you sexually, very much like an STD, and this thing will continue to follow you and hunt you down and it comes at you very slowly. So the concept alone is unique. It's unlike anything else, but then the delivery is just absolutely top notch. It Follows has the feeling of some older horror movies, movies like Halloween, and a lot of that is done on purpose, the places where they filmed, the way it was filmed, but then the concept, as simple as it is, is so well fleshed out in a relatively short movie, and it feels like a complete thing. It doesn't just feel like the start of something, and this was from a director who was a relatively newcomer. I mean, this was his first big movie, and it broke the mold in a way that very few movies do. It feels like it's hand in hand with a lot of well-worn horror movies. However, every little detail in this thing is just unique and different enough to make this movie incredibly fresh back when it came out. If you didn't quite enjoy this one back when it was released, it is worth a second look. And if you did, I can guarantee you this movie's gonna be worth revisiting while it's still on Netflix. All right, now we're in the top 10, and believe it or not, Master Stanley Kubrick is all the way at the back of my top 10 with Full Metal Jacket. Up in the morning to the rising sun. Up in the morning to the rising sun. Gonna run all day till the running sun. Gonna run all day till the running sun. Now that's not a slight against this movie that just speaks as to how strong the rest of this list is. Full Metal Jacket being easily one of the best war movies ever made because of the way it looks at war. It's very different from any other war movie that you can put your finger on. It's structured differently, the message about war is different, and it's got a Kubrick flavor that you can only get from somebody like Stanley Kubrick. This movie's really told in three separate chapters and almost has the flavor of an anthology film yet you do follow one main character, played by Matthew Modine, throughout the entire story. This features one of Vincent D'Onofrio's first screen appearances, and it's still one of his greatest. And you could say the same for R. Lee Ermey, who plays the drill sergeant. It's an amazing movie. If you've never seen it, this is kind of a rite of passage. If you consider yourself a budding movie buff, then definitely check out Full Metal Jacket while it's still available on Netflix. My number nine pick comes from another legendary director, Oliver Stone, and it's one of my personal favorites of his, but it is not his war epic, Platoon, even though I would rank that one a little higher than Full Metal Jacket. I would also clearly rank Natural Born Killers a little higher than Full Metal Jacket. Now, Quentin Tarantino actually wrote the script for Natural Born Killers and sold it before he ever made a movie. However, this came out the same year as Pulp Fiction, so that was a huge year for him, probably the biggest year of his life. And Natural Born Killers not only has a unique Quentin Tarantino flavor and the way that it was written, but it's also present in the way this thing was shot and directed. This feels unlike any other Oliver Stone movie. It is chaotic. The movie itself is basically on acid. However, there are Quentin Tarantino touches that make me feel like he had a little more to do with this movie than just writing the script and handing it over making it an incredibly interesting watch for Tarantino fans. It was almost like a modern day Bonnie and Clyde with these two incredibly vicious characters played by Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis. 
and they're both great, they're the leads, they carry it, but you've got amazingly over the top performances from Tom Sizemore, Rodney Dangerfield, Tommy Lee Jones in an amazingly over the top performance from Robert Downey Jr. before he disappeared off the map for a decade. If you've never seen it, you have to, but be warned, this is a vicious movie and it is not for everyone. Longtime subscribers know I'm a big fan of heist movies. I consider Michael Mann's Heat to be the greatest one ever made, and a close cousin to Heat is The Town. I need your help. I can't tell you what it is. You can never ask me about it later, and we're gonna hurt some people. Whose car are we gonna take? This stars and was directed by Ben Affleck and is a great example of a movie that is better than the sum of its parts. It's easily the best movie he's ever directed. It's certainly one of the best he's ever been in. And you've also got amazing performances from Jeremy Renner, Rebecca Hall, and John Hamm. And while the story here is good, there's a couple of layers, a couple of things that are kind of complex, even maybe more so than in Heat, it's all threaded together incredibly well. I mean, this is an expertly directed movie, a solid story, and really well executed heist sequences, multiple ones. I believe there's three in this movie. They vary up, they're different, and they're all really tense and engaging, including one at Fenway Park, which gets a little bit over the top and goes into action movie territory, but just barely and ultimately, as I said, makes an incredible companion to the movie Heat, which is easily the greatest movie in its genre. Another top-notch movie in its genre, far and away the best movie I think Luke Besson ever created, and he's made some bangers in his career, is Leon the Professional. Benny, bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? This movie also goes just by the title The Professional in some regions. But Luke Besson's known for some incredible movies, including The Fifth Element and La Femme Nikita. But Leon the Professional is his cleanest, tightest, best film out of everything he's ever created. This was also Natalie Portman's very first role, and it's a big one for her. She plays a 12-year-old girl whose parents are murdered, and she's then sort of reluctantly taken in by a professional assassin who may or may not be on the spectrum, meaning they develop this unusual relationship in this movie, yet it works to serve the story. I mentioned Gary Oldman during my Mank review. This is one of his greatest villains, and Gary Oldman is one of the greatest villain actors of all time, up there with Vincent Price. This is some of his best work. He has played creepier, more menacing, characters with makeup and all sorts of stuff, but this is just him with a five o'clock shadow, and he is absolutely terrifying in this movie. If you've never seen it, this is an absolute classic that almost everybody loves. It is quite violent, but the storytelling here is top-notch stuff. Okay, I realize this list is full of a lot of bad guys. My next pick is a gangster movie, but it's a gangster movie with a twist. And not only is it a gangster movie with a twist, it stars Al Pacino and Johnny Depp in Donnie Brasco. Now this is actually a true story. Joseph Pistone was a real FBI undercover agent who was undercover infiltrating the mob for a solid five years. And where this movie ultimately goes is that he starts to identify with the people he's close to in the mob more so than people in his real life. How much of that is true is up for debate, but it makes for an incredibly compelling movie. Not only are both of those guys great, but you get an unusually great role from Michael Madsen. That's not a knock against Michael Madsen, but he's usually got smaller roles, and he's actually in this movie quite a bit. Also, the undercover aspect, which is present throughout the entire story, adds a certain layer to this movie that you just do not get with other mob movies, making it just a top-notch pick that I rank high above a lot of classic mob movies. My next pick is a classic from 1972 starring Burt Reynolds, Ned Beatty, and John Voight in Deliverance. Now, before you skip ahead, listen to my description of this movie because there's a very good chance it's been a long time since you've seen Deliverance and it is well worth revisiting. I promise you forgot how amazing of a thriller this movie actually is. Now, for those of you not familiar, it's about three guys on a canoe trip that run into the wrong folks. And as familiar as that sounds, Deliverance never goes into a weird territory that feels 
forced or like a movie. Deliverance feels incredibly real and has got mounds and mounds of tension, scene after scene. And that's part of what makes Deliverance so terrifying is it feels like something that not only could happen, feels like something that's maybe likely to happen if you go into the wrong places. Now, it's all terrible stuff, but because of the way it unfolds in Deliverance, it feels incredibly realistic, and this movie holds up. It looks great for something that was shot in 1972, and again, is a masterclass in building, and more importantly, when to release tension. My number four pick on this list is largely considered one of, one of, the greatest movies ever made by a lot of film scholars, Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. The idea had been growing in my brain for some time. True force. All the king's men cannot put it back together again. Now, I will agree that back when this was originally released, this was a cutting edge movie. Not in a technological sense, but in a sense of how effective the movie was, how simple the concept is, how much people identified with it, and just how expertly a young director like Martin Scorsese directed this thing. Taxi Driver is another example of a movie that is better than the sum of its parts. However, Taxi Driver has some amazing parts. This was written by Paul Schrader, who is an incredibly famous screenwriter, still makes movies today. In fact, his most recent movie was The Card Counter with Oscar Isaac. But Taxi Driver is still considered his best work. You've got Martin Scorsese, largely considered the best director still working today. This is easily one of his best movies. Robert De Niro was also very early in his career. He had won an Academy Award for The Godfather Part II right before this was made, but he still was not a household name. This movie and this performance put him on the map. There's an amazing supporting cast, including Harvey Keitel and Jodie Foster. So if you're maybe one of my younger viewers and you've never bothered to watch this gym, check it out. One thing I will tell you is that at the climax, you will notice the quality of this movie dramatically falls off. That is because the climax is so bloody, they would not give them an R rating back in 1976 when this was released, and they had to desaturate the film, effectively ruining the last few minutes of the movie, and it is literally lost forever. This movie will forever look that way. It does add kind of a unique touch, but it was done for the wrong reasons, and it's just kind of an interesting thing to keep in mind when you watch the end of this film. Okay, longtime subscribers know my favorite movie of all time is Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, which is included with Netflix right now, but it is not my next pick. In fact, it doesn't even make the list because I've talked about it a few times recently. By the way, speaking of things I've talked about recently, it would be a good time to mention if you're new to the channel and you're still watching me, definitely consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon. That way you get notified when videos like this come out and you don't miss the movies before they're gone from their respective streaming services. That said, my next pick on this list instead is Martin Scorsese's The Departed. Cranberry juice. It's a natural diuretic. My girlfriend drinks it when she's got a period. What do you get, your period? Now, there was a time when I loved Goodfellas and The Departed equally, and I struggled to determine which one I liked best. Ultimately, Goodfellas has stood up as my favorite movie of all time, yet The Departed might be the most expertly directed movie I've ever seen. And just like a lot of the movies on this list, I love all the aspects, all the characters, the performances, I love the way it was written. And if it's been a while since you've seen it, go back and watch the first 15 minutes. This movie has got such a neck break pace to it, it keeps moving scene to scene. It's edited together so sharply with little to no fat on it, it really is incredible. There's a lot to tell you in this story, and Martin Scorsese is like a surgeon. He knows how to get in there and give you exactly what you need to know while still giving it to you in an incredibly entertaining way. And it still holds up today, it just doesn't quite have the magic that I think Goodfellas has. And some of that has gotta be on purpose and some of it has gotta be just luck of the draw. All right, as much as I just gushed about The Departed, I've got two movies on this list above it. One of them being another movie from David Fincher, far and away his best and his greatest achievement, Seven. 
There are seven deadly sins. Gluttony. You want to come take a look at this? Greed. No one touches anything. Sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. So when you want to talk about movies ahead of their time, this movie was so dark, most people didn't want to touch it. In fact, Denzel Washington was offered a role in this movie and he turned it down because of how dark it was. It's a decision he would later say he regretted, but this is another one that audiences resonated with in a way I think no one could have predicted. And I think it's not only because it's so dark, certainly there are people who just love incredibly dark stuff, but this is an amazing detective story that just lingers in this dark underbelly of sort of an unknown city. And then the delivery of the seven deadly sins by this John Doe serial killer is all so smart and interesting all the way through the story. And then you're ultimately left with the most amazing performance Kevin Spacey ever gave. Like a lot of the movies on this list, Seven still looks incredible today. This came out in the mid 90s. It looks like they filmed it yesterday. And this is on film, it's not digital yet. David Fincher, man, he, that is a director that just knows what he is doing. This was his first successful movie. He had done Alien 3 before that, but under heavy, heavy production changes, he doesn't even claim that movie, making Seven really his first feature film. And it's really one of the grandest directorial debuts in movie history, maybe second to, I don't know, Citizen Kane. Now, after The Godfather Part Two, Robert De Niro went on to do Taxi Driver, and the director, Francis Ford Coppola, went on to do one of his greatest movies, Apocalypse Now. Okay, fellas, quit hiding. Now, I realize people consider the Godfather series to be Francis Ford Coppola's greatest work, and those are amazing movies. However, Apocalypse Now was such a wild concept, not just from the script, but the way Francis Ford Coppola decided to attack the filmmaking process here was a wild concept, and it makes for a wild ass movie. There's a certain degree of authenticity to Apocalypse Now where you feel like you're really in the Vietnam War, at least you're getting a window into it, but there's also a layer of artistry. Just like Full Metal Jacket, you can really get a sense of the director's voice with Apocalypse Now in a way I don't think I could get from the Godfather series or really anything else Francis Ford Coppola has directed. And again, he's done some amazing movies, but Apocalypse Now has the most distinct flavor out of anything he's ever directed. I would also say it's easily the most beautiful movie he's ever done. There are some amazing shots and sequences in this movie that still look better than almost anything I've seen so far in 2022. Apocalypse Now Redux is the version on Netflix right now. It has some added scenes, particularly this French colonial stuff that does add to the story. However, I feel like you could skip it. I don't think it needs it that much. However, this is also a remastered version that looks absolutely amazing from beginning to finish. This is a top-notch flick that I have ranked above some amazing movies for a reason. It's damn near perfect. In fact, I'd have a hard time finding a movie as perfectly directed as Apocalypse Now. That said, I hope you found some amazing movies to watch on this list. Thanks to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Again, go check out that link, sign up for free. It's a lot more fun and engaging than just scrolling through social media. If you want even more movie recommendations, go to darrenvandam.com. There's a link to that in the description as well. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode, and you will see me on the next one.